fucking phone down right now. No, no. Uh, here's, uh, here's what's gonna happen. Mom, you're gonna save me 20 minutes by opening the safe. Okay. Then I'm gonna tie you up with your daughter. I'll allow it. What's up, guys? Boy, Benny. 2024 is the year of effing around and finding out, and it is really entertaining. Now, just a reminder, the more you F around, the more you will find out. These are the laws of gravity, and they apply especially to the woke. Here's how it works. See, as you can see, the more you f around, the more you're gonna find out. Now, one of the most hilarious results of the F around find out chart is when the woke F around and find out because, well, they are so hilariously dead set on effing around, the more they have effed around, the harder they are finding out. And there's a story every single day about this. Like for instance, the uber woke mayor of Los Angeles is pushing for zero bail. She doesn't want there to be any capacity for criminals to be locked up or incarcerated. She wants all the criminals out on the street, roaming into the parks, walking into your home. She said so. Her name's Karen Bass. Here she is. Really? An embarrassment on our country that we have more people locked up in the United States than any place in the world. And if you look at the many, many, many people who are locked up, they're locked up because they're poor, because they can't afford bail or they can't afford proper legal defense. Mm. If you dealt with the poverty aspect, you could probably reduce the population by 50 percent with that alone. So you could reduce the prison population by 50%. Seems like Karen Bass is pretty bad at statistics here. Karen Bass ran for mayor of Los Angeles and won her race, won her race uh, by saying she's going to make sure that there is no more homeless in Los Angeles. I mean, uh, Los Angeles is just a homeless hellhole, an absolute crime ridden homeless hellhole. Every, every, there's tents everywhere, the entire sections of the city that are like no go zones. Remember Los Angeles, city of angels. Hmm. And now it's far more like a, the like gates of hell. A year ago, Karen Bass was convinced that 95% of the homeless in Los Angeles would accept housing. After $67 million spent and 2000 dead, it turns out the number was only 0.05%. Bass is now looking for a new revenue stream to fund a gigantic failure that is inside safe. Yeah. So turns out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mary Karen Bass urges LA's wealthy to fund homeless housing. You know, what's interesting about this is that Karen Bass was just on the precipice of helping out the homeless crisis in LA by offering her own house to presumably a homeless criminal. That's right. This is the house of the LA mayor. This is an official residence of the LA mayor. It's a national landmark. Okay. Uh, and, 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 and it is a, a very nice home, by the way. It's in a uh, pristine neighborhood where the comps are 15 million, 10 million, 9 million dollar homes. All right. The comps for the LA mayor's house are in the tens of millions of dollars. So the LA mayor lives in, in a, the lap of luxury. Well, interestingly enough, the effing around on the find out chart hits very hard at the home of, hits, at, hits home for the LA mayor as the LA mayor was home inside of the mansion the taxpayer provided for when someone broke into the house. Presumably one of those people who are put upon by cash bail. LA mayor Karen Bass's home broken into while people were inside, suspect in custody. Oh no, oh my, anyway. A suspect was arrested after breaking into Los Angeles Mayor Karen Bass's house early on Sunday morning. The Los Angeles Police Department said around 6.40 a.m. an individual smashed a window and broke into the uh, Getty House where people were inside. Getty House is Bass's official home located on South Irving Boulevard and Windsor Square. Sounds very fancy. Officers arrived. They apprehended the suspect. The suspect wandered around bloody through the house and, according to reports, went to almost every single room in the home. Hmm. Los Angeles District Attorney George Gascon barred prosecutors from pursuing advanced punishment for gang members. Oh no, the incident comes as crime continues to rise amid LA District Attorney's soft on crime policies. Oh, so Karen Bass getting uh, the fish hook 
of her own bad policies. Here we go. News at six, a break in at the home of LA Mayor Karen Bass. And within the last hour, detectives revealed new information about what happened. The break in happened early this morning, and the intruder has now been arrested. Let's get right to NBC4's Anastasia Almos, who's live outside the mayor's home with new details. Stasi. That's right. This happened early this morning, but LAPD is still here. We're told conducting their investigation. Detectives tell us that this man broke in through essentially a glass door type window. He cut himself and he made him throughout the entire home before they got here and arrested him. The mayor was home, but she is unharmed. So take a look at the video. It happened around 640 this morning. The man broke in, as I said, cutting himself on the glass of the window. And according to police, he made his way throughout the entire home before they responded. They came immediately once they were alerted to the mayor's house alarm. And as they opened the front door, they tell us the man was standing there. They were able to arrest him without incident. Now, in a statement, the mayor's office said Mayor Bass and her family were not injured and are safe. The mayor is grateful to LAPD for responding and arresting the suspect. Detectives, now they could not tell us any further information about the man or his motive for breaking in. They say because they're still investigating. So right now, that's part of an ongoing investigation that's being conducted by Robbery Homicide Division. So we're just um, inside. We're taking photographs. We're collecting any physical evidence we can just to try to make a determination as to what exactly occurred. Must be nice to have the police actually show up if you're in California. Most people don't have the police even show up for this. Why? Because of the policies of Karen Bass. I I, I don't tell you, like, I, I don't, I, I certainly would never call for anything bad to happen to anyone. I don't ever want that. But you voted for this. Karen Bass, you are literally the representative calling for restorative justice, for defunding the police, and for liberating criminals onto the street. You legitimately ran on doing this. So don't expect me to feel sorry for you. I don't. You're getting exactly what you wanted. And everybody else who lives in LA is getting exactly what they voted for. The LA mayoral residence has been broken into again. Apparently there's a trend. Karen Bass advocated for bail reform, so no harm, no foul, right? Yeah, exactly. How nice must it be to have the police actually show up when you call? I guess that's the privilege of the mayor. If there is any privilege, there it is. We called the police recently and had um, no one show up. When we were in San Francisco, we had our car broken into, Bay Area, Oakland, up from LA, also a crime-ridden hellhole with restorative justice, defund the police, and woke policies. Nobody came to help us. We covered it on our show this morning in great detail. So yeah, i huh, really happy to get the hell out and back to Florida. You can keep California. The police here in California have had their balls cut off and have no capacity to actually do any police work. And so people feel, what? In the middle of filming, we heard a loud smash. You guessed it. We were the next statistic. What just happened to you? Is my backpack Is my backpack gone? Oh. Dude. Are you serious? Luckily, we had ALX inside of the car, and ALX physically fought off the robbers by saying, give me the f***ing bag and get the out of my car. Am I just broken serious? Yeah. 100% serious. He wrestled this bag from his f***ing arms. Did you see? Did you see the guy? He had a f-ing black mask on. You know, but that's all I saw. Oh my god! They pulled, pulled up right there in a car. He got out of the other, uh, out of the back seat, smashed the window, tried to get this bag, rustled it away, and then I said, "Get the f- off!" And then he. ALX, we will always play your singer, okay? This is like the WWE. We're not going to bring you on without without the entrance music. So, ALX, tell us about what happened in, uh, we were in Oakland, but the general Bay Area. Uh, it's there in the footage, but like from a first-person perspective, because we were filming about 25 feet away. Uh, yeah. And what was it like inside the car? Yeah, so, yeah, just like you said, you guys had been filming for about five minutes. And I, you know, I was, trying to keep an eye out because I was aware of, you know, the situation. That was, that's kind of why I was in the car because 
you know, we knew this was an issue. Um, we weren't going to leave bags in the car unattended. Um, and like, I, I was like monitoring the parking lot as best as I could. And, you know, we've mentioned there was a police tower with a camera right next to it. There was security in the lot and there were other people in the lot. There was someone parked right in front of us in the car. Um, and all of a sudden I just hear a smash. Um, and I turn around very quickly and I see, uh, this guy with a mask on and he's trying to grab the nearest bag, which was Royce's bag. Uh, so I grabbed it. I grabbed it away from him. I told him to F off, as I mentioned in the video. Um, and then he darted for a, uh, the car that had pulled up and dropped him off and, you know, they got out of there. Um, so I read online that the average smash and grab takes about three seconds. Um, for, for so, to complete and they they have it down to a science um so that's that's kind of i think why they got out of dodge quick when i took the bag is because their goal is to be as fast as possible because they don't want people like taking down their plate or you know calling the police even though you're going to be put on hold in oakland um so that's kind of their goal was is to do as quick as possible Perhaps we haven't actually covered this enough because some people are saying, oh, you're an idiot. How, you know, you're so stupid. Obviously you're, you're dumb guys. We were parked under a police pole. One of those police poles that have, I'm not sure if you can see it in this shot, but there's this police pole like that have the monitors and all the cameras and the flashing cop lights. Like we're, we're right next to a, to a flashing police pole in the middle of the day, the in and out burgers already closed. And we had somebody in the car physically with the car locked. So again, without having an Apache helicopter, like bring us in via ropes, I really am not quite sure what else we could have done if somebody wants to smash your car window and just do it so brazenly. I mean, it's like the Wild West. It's like a train robbery. Okay, so Alex, um, you are obviously very, very close with Elon. We were we were there to tour X and we did a tour of X and we're gonna have that product up. Um, but Elon Musk has responded quite a bit to this and is just effectively saying that's just life and safety. Like, this is just life, right? Here's Elon Musk responding. Um, common experience. Like, this is how you're just forced to live. Like, that's just crazy yeah. to me. And he, he's been pointing out um, that that's, you know, the leftist leaders there uh, just have accepted as part of life there, unfortunately, and they're not doing much to actually solve the problem. Um, and I, I think he, he posted last night at like 2 a.m., um, you know, make crime illegal again. Um, I think it was like after watching this video, honestly. Um, but yeah, he, he's he's torn because, you know, he likes the fact that like, you know, in X's HQ, it's a nice building. It's a historic building. Um, he has a couple companies based there. But then at the same time, he, you know, wants the safety of himself and his employees and he wants to get out of, you know, the state. But he doesn't want to abandon it. He wants he wants it to be saved because he, he you know he has history in that location in San Fran. Um, so it's really you know it's really sad to see it. Um, but I, I think like places like Oakland, there's not even an effort to even save it at this point. Like we were driving through, and there's you know abandoned buildings all over the place, tent cities, and like their their businesses are being forced out instead of you know arresting these people. Um, I was saying, like, if the police actually wanted to stop this, they could have undercover cops in that lot and they could lock those people up because it's like clockwork. We were there for five minutes and it happened. You know, the reporting is accurate that there's thousands of burglaries and it happened within five minutes of being there. So it just shows that they're not enforcing the law and these people are you know, being let back out on the streets. Do we have that data? There it is. 55 cars. OK, so in case you're prone to feel bad for us, you shouldn't. Uh, at the very least, we were able to drive our car back to Avis, which told us this happens three times a day. The guy laughed in our faces. So we come in, we just driven down the road. There's glass everywhere as a re relatively traumatic experience because we don't want to lose any of our gear. We have like a lot of equipment there. We did our best to be secure, park right under the police. And the guy at Avis laughs in our face and says, this, is, this happens three times a day on average, sometimes more. And look at this, 55 cars stolen in the last 48 hours in Oakland, California. This is when we were in Oakland. 55 cars stolen. At least we were able to, like, I guess, like keep driving our vehicle. It didn't drive off with ALX. Yeah. And ALX joins the Crips or the Bloods or whatever gang he would have been initiated into. I'm not sure. Uh, but ALX, like, at least we didn't have, at least we had our car. Uh, they didn't actually, like, drive off with our vehicle. 
This is Oakland. I mean, is yeah, there any way to like state? I, I guess that's a failed been society the worst case scenario because, yeah, the thing is about that kind of um, car, and I often have this criticism. It's like the key only has to be in the car for you to drive it. So, like, you know, so they could have just like broke in and started the car and drove off. But yeah, that's why it's so dangerous. But yeah, and I mean, we had all of our stuff from the airport. So it's like, I only have two hands. I, I could only guard three bags. We had everything else in the back. Um, so, I, I mean, again, I, I'm very glad that, like, they didn't actually get away with anything. But, like, you know, it's it's just nuts that people actually live like that. Uh, I, I don't know who could live in a place like that. I, I, I we got, like, it, 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 we got stressed, so stressed out, like, just being there for a couple days. And it's like a bad energy in that place. It's like a bad energy. You're always, you have your eyes over your shoulder. Like everything is just looks third world. I don't know if we have the footage from Oakland. We should totally load up that, that short that we did wh where it looked like you should see what it looks like out the windows in Oakland. Like let, let's, let's grab that. Robbie, go ahead and grab that. Um, while ALX is up, this wasn't our, this wasn't our, uh, this wasn't our first, uh, our first time getting robbed actually in the Bay area. Uh, Ro like Royce. Royce was no, no. I wanted the the footage from outside of Oakland. What it looked like, what it looked like outside of the vehicle as we were driving. Because you guys got to, you guys got to, you got to see this. I mean, it's hard, it's hard to really process. But you got, you got to see this. I mean, what it looks like outside of the vehicle. Danny's on. Danny, go ahead and grab that. Um, it's like the footage as you're just driving through Oakland, and it like ma it makes it, everything make sense when you see what it looks like outside in Oakland. You're like, this is a third. This this place is third world. This isn't the First world. This is in America. Uh, Royce Rolls Royce was robbed in front of Nancy Pelosi's house. <laughs> Rolls Royce, you want to tell people about your robbery? Because now every member of our team's been robbed. It's a rite of passage for our show. Every member of our team's been robbed. So okay, let me turn my mic on here. Yeah. So this is about how long ago? This is a year ago. A year Almost ago. exactly a year. We went to San Francisco, me and Benny, and we were. Filming the crime. I made a whole short about this. I've made videos about this. We filmed the crime in San Francisco and we're parked outside of Nancy Pelosi's house talking about everything that she's done for San Francisco. Meanwhile, we're like across the street. We're not even far away from the car. Someone reaches in, steals my bag, and it's gone. Backpack gone. Secret Service is like within eyesight, like just not in even in front of the Secret Service. In front of Secret Service, not even paying attention <laughs> that a robbery or just not caring, I guess, that a robbery is taking place across the street. Never got the never got the bag back, but I still look around to see who's wearing my hoodie or wearing my backpack anytime I'm there. Although I don't want to be there ever again, but it's there somewhere. All my stuff is somewhere with some someone. So we will never, I, I will need to, I'll probably need to like hire a paramilitary force, like for us to go back to San Francisco. I'll never go back to San Francisco. We, we're not going back to San Francisco. I'll, I'll need to, again, like hire, I'll hire mercenaries for us to go back. I'm done being robbed in San Francisco. Uh, do we have this? Do we have this? Uh, let's, let's load the short and ladies and gentlemen, to send, to send off ALX, we've actually created a uh, important meme of ALX. Uh, and what it looked like, the best that we could, uh, what it looked like when ALX was fighting off the uh, highway, literal highway robbers, train robbers of California. Um, uh, we're getting that loaded up right now. ALX, uh, final thoughts on San Francisco? Um, the only reason I'd ever go back there is XHQ. Um, but I, I don't see myself going back to Oakland or you know parking in any lots anytime soon so <laughs> i think it's going to be uber from here on out uh even xhq was pretty rough like not inside but outside oh yeah 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 for sure for sure it like getting into the like you had to, we had to like fight through of like bum bum fires get just to get into the parking lot like how to like swerve and dodge like homeless camps just to get into the parking lot and x the x headquarters is like one of the nicest buildings in san francisco in one of the nicest parts of san francisco so That'll tell you everything you need yeah. to know. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, you know our show. We're we're like we're going to do our very best to tell a narrative to tell a, to tell you the, the story as it happened. And that is why Jerry has worked day and night in order to make sure that we had a, a official rendering because we don't have any footage of ALX fighting off the burglars. Um, but we have been able to recreate it uh here. And so ALX, thank you for your service. Oh, <laughs> my
Hold on. This came out of the dry cleaners. <laughs> Why don't you f off? Okay, I'm sorry. Wait. All right, that's, <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> All right, okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, we survived California just barely uh, in and out. I see a lot of people commenting about uh, what they I see a lot of people commenting, Carl's Jr. Some Burger Kings in there, some McDonald's in there. Mad respect. Uh, fast food is a great American invention. Just don't don't eat too much of it, and definitely don't eat it in Oakland. You'll get robbed. Makes me very sad because In and Out is a great Christian conservative company. They have Bible verses on the insides of their cups and on the bottoms of their bags for their burgers. They're an awesome company. If you've never checked them out, you should. They're not paying me to say this. I'm saying it because I love the place. Like. It's very sad to see. And in and out couldn't survive the woke policies of leftists in California, and those policies are heading to your state. Be careful. That is why we fight. That is why we do what we do on this program to stop, well, our, your neighborhood, our neighborhoods from looking like this. It's important to see that this is happening in our country. This is what Oakland looked like, by the way. Uh, thank you for this. This is driving down the street. Uh, like. We, we didn't, ALX and Royce were just on. I didn't say take me to the worst possible part of town. We were getting back on the interstate from the in and out. We were just driving through what would, what is a normal on-ramp. We didn't go searching for like the, the nethers region. We didn't go searching for the worst part of Oakland. This is just as we were physically driving through town to get back onto the interstate. This is what it looked like. in collapse, a society in collapse. California is a society in collapse. And I don't know, I don't know what, I don't know what's possible, how it's possible to, to save it. They'll, they're going to have to change their policies. They're going to have to change their perspective and they're going to have to start electing people uh, that will enforce the laws of the book and, and will value the criminal. And I think there's the final, there's final point. Um, you're, you're gonna value someone, okay? In this in society, as as a as an elected official, and this is gonna this is gonna blend really really nicely into our news of the day when it comes to Ukraine and Congress. If you are a politician, you're going to value someone. You're going to put value on some person, right? So let's take let's take the streets of Oakland or a park, okay, or In and Out. Who is the most valuable person there? Is it the children, the little kids that wish to play on the park, or is it the junkie with their needles? and their guns, their knives, and their crime. Society is going to place value on one of those people. You'll know if you're living in a place that promotes human flourishing if the cops move the bums and the criminals out of the park and let the children play. The park is going to be for someone else. The streets are going to be for either law-abiding citizens and their children and their family units, or they're going to be for criminals. There's, it's one or the other. It's not both. One or the other. And so the society, but what we just came from is a society that places all of the emphasis and the priority on the criminal. And so they shut down the place where people wanna eat, they shut down the burger joint, they make the streets unsafe, you can't walk on the streets, syringes, cr drugs, crime, the parks, of course, you would never allow your children to play in any park in Oakland. They've made a decision to promote and to value the junkies and the criminals instead of the law-abiding citizens and their children and the family units. So that's the question when it comes to where you want to live. Where is it that you wish to live? You should live in a place that value that the junkies and the criminals get locked up, removed from the parks immediately, and the children are allowed to play peacefully and safely. Those are the kind of places you should raise your family. Those are the kind of places you should live. If you live in a place that's the opposite, get out. Get out, right? We couldn't get the hell out of San Francisco fast enough man and i you know you feel sick after being in a place like that uh i did act you did actually like physically feel uh sick there's like a spiritual sickness also like a 
Like it's physically filthy, right?